Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Tea Time with Tanya. I'm Tanya. How you doing today? Today is Monday, the 6th, the 7th of February, 2022. The 7th of February. Already first week of February. Done. Okay. All right. Let's start this off with a blessing. Dear universe, dear spirit guides, dear creator, give us a blessing for this Monday, the seventh day of February, 2022. A blessing for the collective. Oh my goodness. Look at this. We get the a blessing in relationship. A current relationship is reflecting something that is wounded inside you. A wound from long ago, perhaps even from a past life. Look within, find the part of you that is wounded and send it love. All will heal and you will be stronger and wiser for it. Namaste. Let me read this one more time. A, re- a blessing in relationship. A current relationship is reflecting something that is wounded inside you. A wound from long ago, perhaps even from a past life. Look within. Find the part of you that is wounded and send it love. All will heal and you will be stronger and wiser for it. This is an incredible blessing, guys, because all of us as humans go through our our interpersonal um, relationship problems. And it doesn't have to be romantic relationships. This can be uh, relationships that you have with your workmates, um, with your neighbors, um, with people that you commune with in church or in groups. Um, We all bring our own drama to every situation. And I think it's really important that we realize that we separate our drama from everybody else's drama. Um, And what I mean by that is go into every situation with a positive outlook, with a positive attitude, because then you'll be successful. If you are walking into a situation to where someone that you dislike or don't trust is there and you carry that animosity in your heart into the gathering, your dislike for that person will show. It will change the energy of the entire gathering. Maybe not for them, but it definitely will for you. When we drag our own drama into everyday situations, We're choosing to have bad dates. Leave your drama. Put it down. Enjoy your time with others. Don't focus on negativity. Focus on what it can be. And if there's someone that you don't like in the group, if your presence is going to disturb them, then excuse yourself. Be the bigger person. Go home and and do something that you enjoy doing that's not going to be a weight on everybody else. Don't Don't be the third wheel, the flat tire, just because everything is not going your way. We have to think about others as well as ourselves, and then we have to choose. What is best for everybody? Because sometimes removing ourselves from the from the situation is the best course of action. Okay. Good morning, everybody. All right. My first question today, um, since Mike Pence um, 
has been talking to the, the committee. Excuse me. All right. Um, will Mike Pence tell the truth about his fear, about how he feared for his safety on January 6th? Will Mike Pence tell the truth about his fears during the January 6th attack on the Capitol? Will Mike Pence tell the truth about how he was feeling and what they were going through? Yes, first card. Oh my goodness, Mike Pence has had a change of heart. Something has happened. He is, uh, it looks like he is finally disconnecting himself from the Trump train, okay? The first card we have, will Mike Pence tell the truth about his fear on January 6th? We get the three of cups, okay? This this is a celebration, but this is a yes card. He is going to make it very clear how he was feeling and what was going on. He is also going to uh, reveal what how many times he attempted to call 45 on the 6th and his phone calls went unanswered, or if they didn't, what 45 said to him. All you got to do, you know what you got to do, Mike. All you got to do is, is, is make me king. That's it. Okay. All right. Mike Pence wants to get away. Um, he wants to, he wants to take his wife, his name, and get as far away from this mess as possible. He's embroiled in it, though. He was the vice president. He had four years where he could have used <clears throat> the, pres the, the powers of our Constitution to put that madman out of the White House. His money is being affected, um, or he may even be be being financed by others who wish to get rid of 45. Um, 45, and, and this is a little sidebar. Um, I'm going to finish this one and I'll go to that sidebar. The next card we get on Mike Pence, we get the tower. So I want to just see what's going on inside of him. So he's having some, some turmoil. Um, there is trouble in his immediate life. I don't know if it's with his wife, with his congregation, with his grandchildren, or with himself. Um, and a lot of this may be self. People are waking up. People are being forced to look at themselves and what they do. And I know these rich people are a whole different breed, but guys, karma hits them just like it hits regular people. You know, it just hits them in ways that we are unfamiliar with. The next card for Mike Pence, this is what's in his immediate future. He is suffering. He is suffering from sleepless nights, anxiety. He may be still being threatened, um, trying to be coerced. Uh, maybe he's just sick and tired of it now. Maybe... Uh, the way of the coward has brought him more pain than if he would have actually stood up in the first place. But let's all remember, Mike Pence, and let's look at, look at this little white-haired man, he even looks like him, was a planting, uh, I mean, a Putin plant. Vladimir Putin chose Mike Pence to be um, Trump's running mate. Okay? So, Whatever is happening now, maybe it's because he knows that 45 would have let him die. Because if they would have killed the vice president of the United States, 
uh, Trump would have been able to enact martial law. He wanted him to get hurt. This was a part of it too. If they would have got to Pence, it would have given him another option. Guys, we have no idea how lucky we actually were on the 6th of January. The fact that all of the things that 45 had in place to try to steal, to usurp um, our democracy, everything that they planned out and they put thought into, failed by the grace of the creator. Guys, this is serious. And I think this is one of the things that we have to kind of put it in that perspective um, with the punishments that go with this. If this had been any other group of people doing this, there they would already have been tried. They would already have been jailed. They would have been made examples of immediately. Not to mention that as soon as somebody broke a window uh, going into the Capitol, somebody would have got shot. As soon as somebody threw a, a, a fire extinguisher at police officers, someone would have been shot. This, what we have seen, is a glaring red stain on the Republican Party. We see the separatism. We see them pushing the racism and the hate. The problem is when they finally push hard enough to break it, and it is breaking because I don't know a whole lot of red-blooded Americans that are going to be going, yay, Russia. At some point, the light is going to come on. They're going to hear what they are saying in their own ears. And when they have that realization of what they are doing, who they are following, and they realize the propaganda and the propagandists that have led them down this, this dark and windy road, I feel, I really feel that they are going to turn on themselves. I'm not going to, I'm not saying that um, democratic people are not in any kind of you know, danger while these people are running around spreading this hate um, and disinformation and, and literally stoking up people wanting to hurt. And, and that's what Marjorie Taylor Greene is out there doing. She is doing exactly what 45 did. Rile them up, get them all ready to fight. Tell them, pick up your guns, go get them Democrats. This is going to have a ripple effect across everything. And guys, what Marjorie Taylor Greene just did with telling her people to take up arms is going to weigh into, uh, oh, what's her name? Oh, uh, the, the, oh, she's got the lawsuit against the New York Times right now. She ran for, she was vice president. She was on the ticket to be vice president with McCain. I just can't think of her name. Starts with a P. Uh, oh, anyway, what's happening with Marjorie Taylor Greene is going to play into her lawsuit. Everything happens for a reason. Her getting COVID the second time, delaying that law, lawsuit again, Marjorie Taylor Greene doing what she is doing is it's going to become a precedent on what Palin, Sarah Palin did when she said, you know, put them in the crosshairs because she did the same exact thing. She, she told people, pick up your guns and go kill the Democrats. That's exactly what she did. And that's exactly what her minions did. It's, this is going to have 
a ripple effect. I'm sorry, guys. I know I got off. We're talking about Mike Pence, and I'm all the way over here on Sarah Palin and Marjorie Taylor Greene. But anyway, the 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 answer is Mike Pence is going to testify. He is going to tell everything he knows. He is finally done being the patsy. He knows that they would have killed him. He knows 45 wouldn't have batted an eye. It would not have meant anything. I think he's finally peeling himself off the sidewalk. I mean, it's got to be, it's got to suck to be, you know, a chewed up piece of gum that just gets spit out and stepped on, you know, and the only thing you have is to stick yourself to the bottom of another Cretan's shoe. That's Mike Prince, though. It's a, He's a slug. He deserves what he gets, you know. I can't feel sorry for somebody who was a part of trying to overthrow democracy because he was trying to hurt me. So I take that personally, you know. No, I wasn't there. No, but my my right to exist in this country as a free human was in danger because Mike Pence is a coward. Okay, my next que my next question. Um, this one is about the GOP um, putting out that statement that the seditionists were just exercising their political recourse, uh, which makes them. Um, aiding and abetting, um, basically uh, giving aid to seditionists, which is a crime against our Constitution. Will will the will the GOP senators and Republicans who are siding with the seditionists, will they be tried? Will they be brought to trial? And I'm talking about all of these, uh, the in the House and in the Senate at the gov at the federal level, um, to start with. Well, because we know who these people are. Um, they made themselves clear, and it's on the record. Will they be tried? Will they be held and tried? This is Nancy's ball game right here as seditionists. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. First thing we get, look here. This is the either the January 6th committee or this is uh, uh, court cases that are going on. Um, these people are going to spend a lot of money try on their own defense, trying to uh, extract themselves from the trouble that they are about to be in. All of the dirt that they have been doing is going to be drug out and laid bare for everyone to see. All of their dirty dealings are going to be brought to the light. We will see how deep, we are going to see how deep the plans to steal America actually went. This is, the court cases are going to be many and they are going to be severe. A lot of people are panicking and worried right now. They see that their careers, that they, that the that the rest of their political lives are 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 going to be lying in ruin. People are not, you know, they're they're going to want to throw themselves out of windows to try to get away from what they have signed on to because they are cowards. Okay, now don't believe that all you know three hundred of these people are racist bigot morons. They're not. But they are cowards. And, and if you're a coward, you, you may as well, you have signed on. Because Nazi Germany wouldn't have happened if people hadn't been afraid to stand up in the face of wrong. So when you are a freaking coward, 
and you just go along with the gang because you don't want them to point the finger at you and laugh, then you are as big a problem as the ones who are committing the actual crime. Okay? Here's our answer. We get the Wheel of Fortune. Oh, yes. This is karma. What they did is going to boomerang right back around to them. Okay, the next card we get is the three, we get the Empress in, in reverse. The Empress in reverse is light, truth, abundance, and rejoice. That is what is going to come out of all of this. The truth is going to come out. These people are going to be left in the cold. They are going to be lightened of a whole lot of money. And they are not going to be able to hold the prestigious titles and uh, that they have now. The Queen of Cups is the final outcome. The good, fair honest woman is going to be whoever she is she's going to bring that to completion i usually i don't get this is is nancy usually nancy is the um the queen of of uh, wands but this is a powerful woman okay this is an emotional woman and this is a woman who does not want to see um injustice prevail so the answer for that is the seditionists will be uh, tried uh, for sedition. They're not going to get away with it. And everything that they are doing is going to further, I mean, they're, they're literally making it to where Merrick Garland is not going to, that the Department of Justice is not going to have to do long investigations. They're doing things and putting it on the record. They're doing things on tape. They are saying things in front of crowds where there are cameras. That is concrete evidence. When it comes out of their mouth to a crowd of people, it's really hard for them to deny that they, that they said what they said. And that's what they're trying to do. They say what they say and then try to lie and say they never said it. This is not going to work anymore. Um, the problem is, again, there are a lot of landmines that are that are scattered throughout all of the departments, and it does take time, unfortunately, to weed all of them out. They are being weeded out, and justice, as slow as she moves, is moving. Okay. My next question is from Jan. And this one is about Marjorie Taylor Greene telling her supporters to take up arms against the Democrats. Um, will this get her removed? That's what I was kind of ranting about on the first question. Marjorie Taylor Greene, now I didn't hear this, Jan is saying this, that Marjorie Taylor Greene told her supporters to take up arms against the Dems. Will these actions, will these words, will her... Will this get her removed from Congress? Um, at some point, we have got to switch back over to decency. Um, this is just, I mean, this is the way that our government, the way that a certain part of our populace treats law enforcement and the laws as uh, an inconvenience, while the rest of us, are in fear for our lives at a traffic stop. This has got to change. People who attacked our government with weapons, killed police officers, are being lauded as, oh, they were just peaceful protesters. But we are in fear if we get pulled over for speeding. This has got to change. Everybody has got to see the glaring inequities. Because it's not, there's no giggling. There's no segue into humor or, oh, that's just America. 
It's disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting what is going on in our vision. How people who were hell-bent on causing chaos and destruction are being coddled and treated like what they did was just a, well, it was like going to have a picnic in the park. You know, they are not being treated the way that everybody else would be treated. That is not of the same hue. That is not of the same political um, party. If we don't see, I, I mean, I literally, I'm, 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 I'm sick to my stomach right now because it is so disgusting how we are responding to a, a real attack. You know, we keep celebrating 9-11, okay? Oh, the brown people attacked us on 9-11. It wasn't the brown people that attacked us on 1-6. Why is our response to that not as big as our response to 9-11 was? Okay, so will Marjorie Taylor Greene's comments about shooting, killing Democrats get her removed be the thing to finally get her removed? from Congress, or do we have to deal with more idiocracy? Will Marjorie Taylor Greene's latest comments get her removed, finally get her removed from Congress? Boy, that tower keeps coming up. Mm. Okay. Let me let me study on this for just a second so I get this right. Okay. I'm going to read this just like it lies. The first card Marjorie Taylor Greene gets, she gets the tower. Okay. This is distress ruin. She is digging. Um, she is digging her grave. She is digging it. Um, when she stops, nobody knows. She is digging her grave. At some point, she is going to want to get away from her comments. She's going to want to, to get away from her persona. It's go She is the discussion of a lot of meetings. There are lawsuits that are coming at her. Um, oh my goodness. I, this may be from other from other people in Congress that are filing civil lawsuit. They are bringing suit against her for for what she has been doing out of their own pockets. They are suing her. There's also things about hostile work environment. I am being told she is under investigation for creating a hostile work environment, for, for, um, for going against the, the, the rules of conduct at work. She is under investigation. She does not care. Her whole agenda right now is to be as outrageous as she possibly can. She has no stake in being a congressman. Everything that she is doing right now is to be a distraction, to be a disruptor, to be uh, somebody that is just, to be a, a firecracker. She is a firecracker for the GQP to keep the minions entertained confused and following her. They are playing, and I hate to say this, but they are playing. They are relying on the ignorance and feral emotional response 
of QAnon members who we know will believe anything you repeat to them three times. They are still in Texas waiting for uh, uh, for um, uh, for John F. Kennedy to uh, erect himself from the grave and come be vice president. Uh, come on, guys! This is what these. This is how gullible these people are, and they are relying on the gullibility, on the fact that they just have to go out there and stay on script, keep keep pushing the hate, just rile them up, rile them up. These are all pep rallies. That's what Trump does. They're all pep rallies. Get everybody all riled up, give them somebody to hate, and then turn them in that direction and push them on so that they can create as much damage as possible. That's what 45 did his whole four years. Marjorie Taylor Greene's future card is death. This is the end for her. Her end is in sight. Whether this event itself takes her out, I don't know. Her end, however, is in sight. It is not far off. This is right in front of her. This is her near future. She has made lots of money for the GQP. Oh, they appreciate her. But when it comes push to shove, they are going to take the side. They're not going to stand with her. They're going to stand with 45. Okay? She's not the president. She She's just a uh, concierge. Okay? She's the concierge. And She's the concierge to 45, but his minions are only faithful to him, not to her. In the end, you know, the secrets and mysteries, and the last card is the Empress, and that's secrets and mysteries, okay? In the end, her secrets are going to get her, okay? But right there, right there, Jan, um, her, days are, her days are numbered in the Senate. Whether these comments are, are what's going to do it or if it's a culmination of all the things that she has done, she is on her way out. Okay. Uh, my next question is from Danielle. And Danielle says, there is a new super HIV virus. Will it spread like HIV did in the 80s? Um, will and I'm sorry, Danielle, I changed that a little bit um, to, to read more like that. Will the, is there a new super HIV virus and will it spread like HIV did in the, in the 80s? Okay. Is there a new HIV virus and will, is, will it spread like HIV did in the 80s? The 80s. Okay. First part, I'm, I'm going to stop right there because it's kind of a two-part question. The first part of this, is there a new HIV virus? Okay. Um, what we got is looking at loss. So we've got this, we got the five of cups. Not looking at what's left over here, but looking at what's lost. And there's more loss than's left. So this is kind of significant, Danielle. Um, we're going to have to learn how to fight differently. The Queen of Swords. Um, this is widowhood, female sadness, embarrassment, um, ass, abstinence, sterility, and privation, okay? This can be looked at as sickness, you know, or something that can cause death, um, that will result in death. The next card we get is the emperor. This is a, a good, this is stability, a good, honest uh, I mean, a strong person, but this is stability, which means that this is a very virulent, virulent strain. So the last 
card that I drew, we get the Ace of Swords. And this is a yes. This is just, yeah. Okay, so the first part of that question, there is a new super HIV virus. Second part of the question, will this new virus spread like it did in the 80s? Oh, seriously? Oh, my gosh. Now, okay. All right. We're going to want to get away from this, okay? We're going to want to get in front of this, get out in front of this, do whatever we can to not have this impact us. This is going to be a game. Ugh. Okay. I, I knew there was, there's, okay. Here, here's the answer. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a virulent strain. And it is going to spread like it did in the 80s. Okay. Again, this is going to cause a whole bunch of people to fight. Why? Because HIV is spread through sexual contact. So, how do you stop viruses from spreading sexually? You ask people to what? Wear a condom. Put something on their body so that their bodily fluids do not enter or affect another person. We are right back at COVID. Asking people to use protection to protect others against something that nobody should die from because all it takes is a little act of empathy to stop the entire thing. But... People are going to be people. And no, I don't want to wear a condom. Or we'll have people that are just going to infect other people because they can. And that's disgusting because after COVID, I don't know how people are out there having random sex anyway. But hey, I'm, I'm old and I'm in the house and I'm not out there anymore. So I don't know how things are, how things are going out there. I know I have no desire to go to no bar, no nightclub or to hook up with no random person nowhere because of COVID. Let's not even talk about HIV. Okay. My next question is also from Danielle. Is China and I put these other two in this one. Sorry, um, Danielle, I changed this one again. Is China, Russia, and Belarus planning any coordinated attacks anywhere? Is Russia, China, or Belarus um, planning any coordinated attacks anywhere? Is Russia, China, and Belarus planning to co co to to any coordinated attacks anywhere? Russia, China, and Belarus are they working together to try to invade anywhere? Okay, guys, look at this. Okay, first card we get is justice. Okay, so whatever they do, they are going to be met with opposition instantly. Okay, they are going to get instant justice wherever they decide that they want to attack. And I say that because the second card is the Wheel of Fortune. This is already in the works. They have already planned what they're going to do. Unfortunately. Their timing, karma, the universe is not on their side. They're literally going to walk into their own trap. Say it. It's going to be all bad for them. Okay. It's going to be all bad. It's going to result in pain, excruciating pain, sadness. This is tears, sadness, desolation. And this is against these these cut these China, Russia, and Belarus. 
whatever they are planning to do is going to have the opposite effect on them. They are going to want to go and take they are going to be taken from. They're going to try to dominate. They are going to be dominated. This is something that they are not expecting to happen. It's like the whole rest of the world is already in defense mode. They are setting up their parameters. They are waiting. They are ready. They are planning um, to make anything that happens to be dealt with swiftly, swiftly and, and succinctly. They are, they are not prepared for the trouble that, that they are going to receive in return. They're going in thinking that they're going to be able to just bully the people in these regions that they are going to try to, to creep into. But these people are not, these people are, they, they, they're, they're not going to back down. They're going to fight. And they'll fight to the death. And, and this is weird in 2022 to be saying that villagers are going to fight armies to the death. We are not in the Crusades, but it kind of seems like we are. There's going to be, now this is a coordinated attack here, okay? This is a coordinated attack. And this is about, here's the end card, about money. So, yes, Danielle, China, Russia, and Belarus are in cahoots together. They are planning, you know, co uh, coordinated attacks. This is about money, about resources, about land, about getting areas under control that are going to bring in financial gain. This is not going to work out in their favor, okay? Whatever they do, they are going to be faced. They're going to be met with, with an, an obstructive force. They are going to be pushed back against. They are not going to walk into anywhere. They are going to face trouble everywhere. And in the end, they are going to, it is going to be painful for them. Whatever it is that they are trying to achieve through this, it's like pirate days. It's ridiculous. Um, by force, trying to just snatch by force. And people are not the people of yesteryear anymore. And after two and a half years of people being locked down, having to fight to go get a cheeseburger, <laughs> uh, I think they're going to, they're, they're underestimating what the population is prepared to do at this point. So they're not going to walk in and waltz out. Um, people have been suffering for too long. And it's kind of at this point, they have zero Fs to give and nothing to lose. So they're not going to lay down and let somebody take what they have left because everybody is suffering. And really, nobody has a whole lot except for the oligarchs. And these are the ones who are causing all the trouble. But it's the little guys who pay the price. All right. My next question, my last question. Will the 45 factor be successful in getting Americans to take up arms against the government again? Basically, what I'm asking is, will the Marjorie Taylor Greens, the Fox Newses, and all of these despots, will they be successful um, in riling up the GQP base again to get them to attack America again? And guys, if you guys don't think that the timing of this isn't coordinated with Russia, think again, okay? Think again. The Republican Party is in Putin's pocket. He is running. He is, he is, he is dealing so many card games that it is ridiculous. He's, he's still through 45 controlling an entire population and a whole news network in our country turning Americans against America, okay? Will the 45 factor 
be successful in getting Americans to take up arms against our government again? Do we run the risk of having another January 6th? There we go. Oh my God. All right, I'm going to pull this. I'm going to throw every card just because I need to know. All right, here we go. Will the 45 factor be successful in getting Americans to take up arms against the government again? And not only do we get the 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 Ace of Cups, but we we get the Ace of Cups, the Holy Table. Okay, this is people who talk to each other, preachers, you know, influencers. This is what Marjorie Taylor Greene is doing. This is what. Uh, 45 is doing when he has his pep rally, um, whatever you call them. That they're pep rallies. They are meant. They they have one purpose, and that is to well, two purposes: to fleece, to get as much money from the uh, people who go, and to turn them into rabid dogs. And that's what they do. They go. They pump them full of hate. And then they give, show them a picture of who they're supposed to go get and then send them off with all that hate and vitriol. Okay. The second card, we get the, the, the seven of cups, the illusion, delusion, the smoke and mirrors. And that's what all this is. They are, again, relying on the gullibility, relying on... Um, on their base believing anything that they tell them and their base being malleable enough for them to encourage them for a second time to go fight against an entity that is going to wind up putting them in jail. Our whole nation is at a crossroads. We have to see things for what they are. This everything that I've been telling you guys about clearing your throat chakra, about not allowing lies to prevail in your presence, about standing up for truth, for right, for those who can't stand up for themselves. We are there, guys. This is where we are. Our participation time is now needed. Okay, it's time for us to just stop allowing the liars to lie freely. Okay, I'm not saying you got to go out there and punch somebody in the nose. But if you hear somebody out there just talking blatant BS, call it BS. Here's the second part. Here's the second yes. The three of cups. Okay, will they be successful in getting... Americans to do another January 6th. This is going to cause fighting, like I keep saying, within the GOP, because everybody is not on the same page. However, they are 100% slugs. There is not a spine in the bunch. There's no leadership. There's just a bunch of invertebrates flopping against each other, wallowing in each other's slime. What's coming for them? We get the four of swords. The repose, the hermit's repose card. You know, a lot of people are going to just crawl back under their rocks, so to speak. Kind of like what happened in the late 80s. You know, when everything went just haywire and all the crazies just kind of disappeared for about a decade and then they came back as the Tea Party and now they've come back as QAnon, okay? They face trouble. There is trouble. There, a lot of them may die again if they try to do it, okay? Here's, here's the fight. Here's the fight. This is them fighting. 
you know, they're fighting. You know, this is, I call it the fighting off opposition. But the seven of, of rods of is discussion, worldly strife, negotiation, war of trade and barter. Okay. Um, so this is, this is going to show that they are, they are going to be, they are going to stand up and they are going to try to fight against it, but they are going to be put down. Okay. It's not going to be successful. And the last card for the final outcome, we get the hanged man. Okay. Seeing things in a different light. Um, I'm going to read the hanged man. This is wisdom, trials, trials, discernment, um, sacrifice, intuition, divination, and prophecy. Okay. So this, you know, you look at that, you like kind of seeing into the future or repeating the past, you know, seeing what, what have they have already done and how that turned out. Okay. January 6th was not a successful day for QAnon. It was not a successful day for the Democrats. They are going to repeat their own history. Okay, guys. Um, let me get into the weather report. Okay, right now, and I'll start here on the California side, uh, Washington, Oregon, California, um, down the coast to Mexico. We're going to have the, um, in Northern California, it's like for a couple of days, everything's going to kind of slow down. Not going to be um, too much wet weather, but it's going to be windy and it's going to be cold. Okay. And that's coming all the way down from British Columbia, Columbia, all the way down the coast. Uh, a little bit later in the week, uh, we are going to, that rain is going to come down. And like I said, it's going to come hard. So just make sure that you're prepared for the rain. Not everybody's going to get rain, but the areas that do get rain, be prepared for flash flooding. Be prepared. That, that's it. Be prepared for flash flooding. Um, Low-lying areas. If your house, okay. If your house is in a on a low street and your yard usually gets water in it when it rains, fill up some bags of dirt and put them around your porch and your door to stop the water from coming to your house because uh, low yards are going to get flooded. And sand, a sandbag in the right place can make that current go around your house instead of coming inside of it. So, okay, be prepared for the rain on the West Coast. On the East Coast, nope, let's start it. Let's go Texas. We're going to come up the middle. Texas, um, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Alabama, oh, that's, no, that's too far. Louisiana, um, cold, okay, and you guys already know. It's been ridiculously cold. It's not going to get any better. Uh, oh, um, up the East Coast, again, starting, this one's going to start down south, and it's going to churn its way, and it's going to be a slow one. It's going to drop a lot of rain and snow. There's going to be, let me come back up to the middle of the United States, more wind events that are going to come from California. Um, that may stir up uh, tornadoes again, hurricane, tur tornadoes in Oklahoma, in some parts of North Texas. Uh, by not North Dakota, it is going to, it's already cold. Oh, I don't even know how to tell y'all to prepare for colder. It's going to it's going to be very 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 frigid um, going into the weekend. It's just going to be miserable. Protect your pipes if you can, guys. Order a jackery. Um, watch some YouTube videos on how to make emergency heat sources out of candles and and things like that. 
go to the 99 cent store, get some candles, okay, so that you're not in the dark. You can cook on candles. You can keep yourself warm with candles. There's a lot of things you can do. But if you can get yourself an independent power source, you can plug in a heater. And I would rather be warm in the dark than cold in the light, okay? So prioritize, prioritize. Um, our weather, it's going to be challenging. It's like everything that's going on in our social and our social, political, socio-economical, everything is, is a torrent. It's just churning chaos. We are at the point where we have to decide how we're going to respond and react and how we're going to, what we're going to do for ourselves and for each other, okay? Stay off the roads if you don't have to drive. Check on your neighbors if you guys are in snowy areas, um, especially if your power has been out for any amount of time. Please check on your mamas with little babies. Check on your elderly. Um, if you have, go in your basement, pull out 50 years of old blankets. Doesn't matter if they're, if they're cruddy, take them. Some, it's, somebody can use that for something. Okay. Somebody cold can use your blanket. Somebody cold can use your old coats, your old shoes. There are so many homeless that are, have nowhere to go, that are perishing alone in cars, parked in alleys. Let's be a community. I love you guys. I love you. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. I love you guys. Have a great Monday. Bye-bye.